hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or... I don't know, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I... <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment for each show and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to. All right, fine, let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in folks, we're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay, grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. Got it. Great. Now turn it off. All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's a riot. Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm, is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Now come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I labeled it for you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Blaster, front of the desk to the right. There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume slider left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. All right, seems to be all working. We done, Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? I uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, you're live in three, two... 189.16. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm gonna play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. 
It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so... I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Time to go on the journey that is Last Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Oh, God, Forrest, that was amazing. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Lighten up, Forrest. That's going to be the highlight of my week. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Time to turn the music off. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. We have a call waiting. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. Caller, you're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No! Look, I found a body and I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close, and I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Okay, 
I don't I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or <laughs> whatever cops are supposed to do? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's going to man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. I'm a radio talk show host, Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. I'm not a 911 operator. Why me? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but... I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Please don't stare at me. I... Oh, wait. That might be them. I, 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 th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do! Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just going to sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. You mean we're gonna be on our own? Just Peggy and me, and no one else, responding to emergency calls. You'll be fine. You and Peggy just work together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. No way. This can't. Oh, Forrest, we have big trouble. 
What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? But that mask, how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s, wore that mask. But he's dead. He's... what the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh... I'll just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But... Wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um... Uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. What should I take? I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? I've got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. Do you hear that? No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay. Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. Just lean on me. <sighs> yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck, Leslie. That's one brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. We're here, Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. Over? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Leslie, are you two okay? Did you get away? Or... Forrest, that taser? Definitely the right call. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. 
Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you, I prefer doing it from your side of the phone. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek has a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. You keep that pedal to the floor then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in... Oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind, or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and... killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just... did. Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday, after midnight, could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At best. Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners? 35, yeah. It's a school night. <sighs> and what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah. Before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to ten, fifteen. Easy. Five thousand on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I guess. Yeah. I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. When you're ready, shut the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello?
okay? What's your name and why are you calling in? Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice? To us? I, I mean, me! We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels or I'll cut your face off uh. goddamn kids I'm cutting them off yeah cut him off uh. we also want a mega gold for anyone just tuning in we do in fact have an actual killer out on the streets tonight. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Now it's time to go with The Flow, and this is their hit, Crying for Help. Hey, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Ugh, oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. I'm sorry, Sandra, but the sheriff is dead. We're trying to get help in from Henderson now. It's actually happening. Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car and nothing flat. But I dropped my key somewhere along the way. I never locked the door because I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Can you go back and find your keys? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I... I don't. Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. You sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. You're gonna love this next track. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They're like the same though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. 
I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Not getting in there tonight. This looks useful. Find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this, baby? Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I... I... Oh, screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Unscrew the steering column. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay, we can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. Oh, perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next?
Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. We did it, Forrest! We sure did. Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. comes one of my favorites. I still can't believe this is happening. Right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? It's nothing personal, Peggy, but it's not Chicago. Or, hell, it's not really anywhere. Well, I like it here. People are polite and... Stab happy? Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible after a while. Not terrible after a while? My brain is coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night and that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the screen contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Caller on line one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian, that's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, no, no. Poor choice it was tonight, I guess. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh. Thank you, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Oh, for... Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh. Real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Sure. Done. 
Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Oh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from The Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? I am 911. At least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. And this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? 
They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. I know this time. That could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. You... you don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell... I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy? The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay, go to the office on the other end of the hall, grab the fax from the machine, easy. This must be it. So many locked doors, so few keys. Did you get the fax? Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. Whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. Don't worry, Maurice. You can thank me when you're safely home. Thank you? It's your producer I'll be crediting if I make it through this. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. 
Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I've got to give you credit for that, but I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. I, I can move the furniture out of the way, but not quickly or quietly. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Peggy, I don't think now's the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god, Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Maybe. We could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. What he calls his work radio. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town. We're close. Let's make it happen, Peggy. How can we fail? I mean, it's a plan with steps. Get the radio, plant it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and... Oh! Call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio! It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Uh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, goddammit. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! You just... Oh, that's a good point. But wait! We're the radio! We can just be quiet until you're ready! If you can do that, then... Yeah, sure! 189.16, I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double-checks. Can you confirm that? 189.16, The Scream. Gallows Creek's best and only phone-in talk show with me, Forrest Nash. And me, Peggy. Jesus.
Jesus Christ. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Calling the boardroom now. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak the slip. What a great plan this is, Carl. Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet. But, uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. What do you reckon? Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Quick, Mr. Russell, hide in the back room in your office. Forrest, I don't think that was enough time for him to hide. Wait, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> Forrest Dash, you son of a bitch! I told you to... Oh, 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 oh. Forrest, he's... He's... Dead. <sighs> Let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. I think that would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> Folks, we'll be back soon. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call after this next track. Well, this is gonna be a long night. Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. 
sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. Regret this, but okay. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy. That's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. Okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. That was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Me?
Uh, I should grab that key Peggy slid under her door. A tape. Play on air. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Put it on, I guess. Let's see what it is. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I. Oh, Forrest. We're still on air. Say something. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how the killer could get from the newspaper to KFAM so quick, but... Be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. Play a record, Forrest. You'll like this next song. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. You stopped the show for a tape? Just go get it. about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. 
I'll be frank. I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Stature, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Oh, prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest, mate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina. You know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. How was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest? You know, Roddy Snatcher? Are you a big fan of Roddy? I love Roddy. I Will Always Find You was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to KFAM, not to me. Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well... If that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Hey, did you get it? No, not yet. Any ideas where it might be? If it got mailed to the station, it's probably still at reception. Check around there. Thanks. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. Every time I've seen him live. Peggy, we just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh, most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? Prove it. Come face me, a true warrior at the gallows waste disposal plant. Guess what? This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. 
Oh, no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. The world-famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seeds, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. And bait tattoo, face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle. Pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here, Forrest. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Who's there? Who is this? <sighs> Hello. Are, are you still with us? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Hey, listen, caller. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times? Sure. Okay. Okay. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan. Uh, Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, God. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout! If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. I can't do this! Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, Here's some music for your own midnight snacks. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, Final Breath. Peggy, what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I think. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, 
Call the takeout, pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related, and maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? That's not opening. We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... Uh... <sighs> I just have to look around. Grilling spree. I better see what's on this tape. Free six pack. Huh. I wonder how well Gallows High performed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Forrest, do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Uh, I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Spare ribs. Christ.
Rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer. I wonder how well Gallows High performed. Find anything useful? Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Fratman calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. Uh, may I take your order? I need some garlic bread. I need the bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know, the frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. We should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. You mean equally awful? No, equally good. But if I had to order, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right, so between grilling spree and chalupa cobbers. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Time to turn the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 this is Fratman Bunker. We got some call this number. <laughs> yes. Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a Goose prank. No, this is Forrest Nash, host of... Uh-huh, <laughs> sure thing, Goose. Uh, uh, listen, I need you to... Goose, come get me. Brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian. What do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the Radio Man can control it. So play us the flow. Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, Radio Man. You got my attention. What is it? <laughs> 
Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you. Just say no more. Plunker's moving the house. Forrest, line two. Hello. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Please. Oh, my God. It's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes, some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Porty's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Porty, no! No free ads! <sighs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Porty's did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just. Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight, to take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually, but, uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. 
Stay calm, Eugene. We'll get you out of this. Carm! I'm about to die a virgin! Listen, Eugene. Breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then, if she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception, never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah, sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses, just go and find something to help us. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Any luck? Yeah. I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? Never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. When you're ready, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. Go left. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh. I went left. Then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. Go backwards. Oh, God. Why didn't I just invite her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Go left. Go 
go right. I can't run. Much more. I just passed a cord and silo. Didn't see anything else. Go right. held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. And thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. I don't know about wonderful, but, uh... Thanks. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but... Uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks, here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Dawn. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. all the songs to request. Why'd it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song, for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Hey, how'd it go, Mr. Dojo? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... Uh... Why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn piece of. You came for the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but. Oh. Oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. 
I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street, and Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. <clears throat> oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. Murphy, tell me what you can smell. What do you think changes? I told you earlier. Fire! I smell fire! This isn't helping. Go to recycling. Recycling. Got it. Come on, Catherine. The plant's went up again. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? In a dumpster, man! What do you want from me? <laughs> do you hear anything, Murphy? I hear my heart about to pound out of my chest! Put the receiver up to the lid. Turn it up! Catherine, go to the crusher. Henderson's disposal and Wyatt Ridge Municipal. 
open the Henderson container. You just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest? Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know you're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Yeah, how about the goddamn serial killer? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, Unstable and- You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it- Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of- And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then... Step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror the power of the alligator, the discipline of the tarantula, the speed of the tuna, the poise of the scorpion, and the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using glass.
classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. The world-famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Corn Hole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seats, bitten sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. And fake tattoo, face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. Caller on line one. I suppose I should take this call. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god! Yeah, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this! Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name?
Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Go to the closet. Okay, I'll... Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. <sighs> Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? <laughs> it's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask? It is hard to breathe. Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, man! Everyone, get inside! Everyone, run! You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend, we drove out to the old murder house, and... Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Focus, stay focused, Carrie. Focus. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'm here. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're going to get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in. Forrest, listen, uh, we'll see what we can come up with, and, uh, what? Scott, you're not any good at, uh, and, no, no, Chad, out of all of us, you're not the one to, oh. Everything okay? No, we, uh, uh, we're figuring out a plan, but everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do, but I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker, or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. 
All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trap kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Tuck Jeannie away. Friendship quiz. This might work. Find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one, whenever you're ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway. That brings us to part three, getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so it'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four, we need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. 
Part five, we tricked the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Tammy. Tammy, if you survive this, never do that British accent again. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Impressive as hell, right? Damn straight. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter! To the roof! Go, Heather! She's off and away! All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go! Keys. 
secretary, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him for his... Oh, God. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait, get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. Let me go. Let me go. No. Just drive. Oh, my God. You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to the parents whose kids won't make it home tonight. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. had a call come in. Time to turn the music off. Horace Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, Tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. 
I had a guy from Starlink Security here earlier installing the Starlink 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems, and sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh! Yeah, welcome to the show, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate? Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. <laughs> Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. <laughs> Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though not everybody made it, and uh, I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't... Wh why am I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... Why let me go? Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did to... These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, uh, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And 
Thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that for us. We have a caller. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it. But you didn't? Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? But we don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. But, Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Don, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's something unnatural about this freak. He's, he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will. Forrest? Peggy, I'm... I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. And you'll find out. <sighs> well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about- I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth, All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait, our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Scream, with me, Peggy. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open alone.
Here it is. Long ride home. It locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. And that's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. Let's see if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. I should check the fuse box. Like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Bingo! I could probably survive that fall. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. I'll just take that. Might be important.
Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door lock behind. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right, and we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too? The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. How's it going? Uh, it's not going well. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? I'm good now. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. How's it going? I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is?
Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Chuck Brody, listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Boris Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it and- Oh God, it, it's today. The year I finally let myself forget, I- Quit talking and run! I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck... I don't know. Hang on. We're getting a call. Hello? Chuck? Chuck! Of course! And the whole goddamn gas station's got up! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forrest! It's funky, it's groovy, it's Stab in the Twilight by Knife and Easy. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Hmm. A key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs.
give me some warning before yelling down the intercom? Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Forrest, you should listen to that first tape you found. George Barrow, 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait, George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death...
small lacerations to arms, legs, and face, typically obtained by running through foliage, severe blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running without stopping. Toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. This has to be important. feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. is not going to believe this. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? 
it sounds like he was running for his life. Spreading through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. When we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Moved the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You, do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? Uh, I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. God, you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean... Really? How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. When you're ready, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Time to turn the music off. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. When you're ready, shut the music off.
Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Bunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives, the huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. No. <laughs> It's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. <laughs> 